Okay. There we go. And, I mean, it may not be like to the very accurate, to the very second, uh, the uh, stop uh, stopwatch, but, you know. Good enough. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, you, you just finish up your sentence or your paragraph uh, as soon as it hits 29. Which is not bad that I got it to 29 minutes. Greetings, everyone. Gee, why do I feel warm and humid again? Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Progressive Discussions, the new Progressive Discussions, <clears throat> high definition at 18.3 megapixels. I am your host, James P. Madonna <clears throat> of Mega Life 21, and I'm here with my co host and mentor. And the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Um, I'm here. Good. I'm not in the coffin like, uh, like Mr. Sven Gulli <laughs> over there. Hey, we're all set. Tis the season. Tis the season. <laughs> the day of uh, Halloween, All Hallows' Eve 2017 is ahead of us because it is about mid-October 2017. You wouldn't think it from the unseasonably warm and humid weather. We got the Day of the Dead, Sugar Skull, the, sugar gargo skull. the Gargoyles. Well, the, these are called Sugar Skulls in Latin America. It, it, the, the custom dates back to uh, the Mayans and the Aztecs. They started it in Mexico, uh, the sugar, Day of the Dead. Sugar Pumpkins. No, no you're, th guys. you're thinking of all pleasant things. No, they, they, they you know, they have parades and they uh -huh. wear masks. You know, Mass Bob would appreciate that. Well, speaking of the uh, ancient Mexican holiday of, of the uh, uh, the Day of the Dead, which is November second, which <laughs> fo follows All Souls Day, which is November first, which was my grandfather's birthday. God rest his soul, and of course, All Hallows' Eve is uh, October 31st, right? We are drinking Dos Equis Ambar. That's right. The very first beer Dos Equis ever came out with back in the mid-1800s, mm. Dos, Dos Equis Ambar. I am going to taste it for the very first time. I, I am familiar with Dos Equis Lager, which I happen to think is the best tasting Mexican beer of all, but this is supposed to be darker and stronger. It, it is a brown beer, and I will try it for the very first time. Not bad. Have you tasted yours yet? Yes. Okay. Seven lucky bells for this week's progressive discussions. <clears throat> Everything we discuss politically is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. <laughs> Here's the conch soaking that conch energy. Yes, King Neptune, yes. It, it, it will be a... Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I have them here, the political... Uh, Mumbo jumbo that I received in the mail this week. <coughs> yeah. Okay. And I, oh, and I'll mention that woman. Right, thank you. Yeah, the woman uh, who was arrested for refusing to get her child vaccinated. Ah. Uh, oh, here's. This is for you. It's a a menu. Ah. A you know mom's meal menu. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. There's no sense of me showing you the uh, the mail from the uh, Democratic candidates, so I might as well, you know, um, show you uh, this here. Now, you let me know if this is coming from a Republican or not, because I generally do not pay too much attention to local politics, because there are a bunch of corrupt sleaze bags here in the tri-state area 
especially New Jersey. Okay, here you got a man holding a bag of loot. All right, and a, and a trophy, probably a participation participation trophy like Donald Trump after he plays golf. That he that he 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 said this. What did he say? This trophy is in. This trophy is in honor of uh, 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 Hurricane Harvey victims. Me no, Mexico, uh, Mexico City, and Puerto Rico. He said he like. I didn't hear it. Yeah, I read an article where he 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 like dedicated his participation participation trophy in golf to the victims of uh, Hurricane uh, Maria. They don't need a participation trophy salute. What they need is help. Mm -hmm. Help, clean water, food, medical attention, uh, 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 clean, dry housing, proper housing, and money. Right. Not a, uh, 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 you know, honoring them with some stupid, ridiculous participation trophy. Anyway, are you tired of paying more in property taxes and getting less in return? Then stop rewarding career politicians like Senator Bob Gordon with your votes. Now, this is an anti-Bob Gordon... Bob Gordon is a Democrat. Phil Murphy is a Democrat. Okay, like, okay, so this is coming from the Republicans. Right. Fact. Yeah, right. Republicans and facts, they don't, they don't go hand in hand. Uh, we can only change Trenton if we change the people we send there. Durr. Uh, yeah. Durr. Incumbent. Senator Bob Gordon. You know, I'm reading the opposite side. Incumbent Senator Bob Gordon equals higher taxes on New Jersey's middle class. No, the lack of taxation of the rich, the rich uh, being on a tax vacation, equals higher taxes on New Jersey's middle class, mm -hmm. which probably includes property taxes too. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Uh, New Jersey had highest property taxes in the nation in 2016 again study finds well because the rich are not paying their fair share in taxes thanks to uh, eight years of Chris Christie property taxes increased by 6.6 .6 billion well sure they put the burden when the rich don't pay their taxes their fair share in taxes the burden goes on the middle class Okay, New Jersey, that was from NewJersey.com, yeah. I wonder if these are uh, establishment uh, organizations, kissing, kissing corporate and right-wing ass. New Jersey Herald News, drivers fume as gas tax hike passes in Trenton. Gas taxes increased 23 cents a gallon overnight. Ugh. Well, Republicans have to get the money the revenue from somewhere, and I guess it's the little guy again, mm -hmm. because how much gasoline does the uh, top 2% use, right? New Jersey Transit Board ignores last-ditch pleas, approves fare hike and service cuts. New Jersey Transit increased fares and tolls on commuters. Sure, who are most of the commuters? Who are the predominantly the commuters of the lower 98% of the population, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, here we go. That was NewJersey.com again. I don't even know if, if they're accurately quoting these uh, <coughs> publications, the, uh, these media, local media publications. Mm -hmm. New Jersey radio station, New Jersey 101.5. Quote, Phil Murphy, this was uh, August 18, 2017. Phil Murphy, I'll raise New Jersey taxes by 1.3 billion. Yeah, maybe he's going to raise the tax, these taxes on the rich, like he should. State or bring back some that Christie, you know, gave away. State taxes, the corporations, and etc. <clears throat> state taxes poised to increase again next year. Okay, finally, some good news: we can change Trenton on November 7th. Vote for a business owner. Mom, coach, public servant, and independent voice. Independent voice? Kelly Lang Schultz for state senator. I would say, I don't know who this person is, but I would say according to this 
advertisement, she might be a Republican. Mm -hmm. uh, blaming, you know, with, with the same tired bullshit, talking about the tax, the so-called tax and spend liberals, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, uh, talking about the big lie, trickle-down economics, which is nothing but prosperity that pools at the top, and then they just replace the pool with a larger pool before it overflows. So, you know, but anyway, uh, these other quotes w was July 15, 2015, October 9, 2016, and April 6, 2017. So we don't even know if these quotes are, are true, but we definitely do not need four additional years of people like Chris Christie. Okay, here we go. The C Christie, the sequel. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. <laughs> and here you can see Chris Christie looking like a beached whale uh, hogging, uh, what is it, Island Beach State Park? Yes, sir. Hogging it by, by closing it uh, near the 4th of July uh, holiday weekend so him and his family can hog it, but his his excuse was they already made plans to go there, uh -huh. and they were on on a private beach. Well, then why did you have to close the entire state park if you uh -huh. were on a private beach? All right, that's that's what Kim uh, 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 Guadagno Guadano Guadano. That's what Kim Guadamo would be. Four more years of the worst <laughs> movie New Jersey has ever seen. So uh, this this is a this is a right wing chick. Usually, women have a tendency to be very compassionate and uh, empathic. I mean, em empathetic if, the, if that word exists, and uh, um, you know, nurturing, you know, and um, uh, and progressive, but. Not, not with right-wing women, you know. I mean, I was going to say Fox News chicks, but I think they're there for ratings because they all have certain traits in common, and they probably just, they're told what to say and read off teleprompters. Prompters. Her, uh, here we go. The critics agree. Christie and, uh, uh, Christy and uh, Guayadano are terrible for women, vetoing equal pay. That's true. Worst on the economy, credit rating lowered 11 times. <laughs> Horrific on education, underfunding by $2 billion. Enough is enough. No third term, no Guayadano. Yeah. And there's a picture of them holding hands. Aww. So this is, this is obviously uh, from, you know, uh, the Democratic opposition. Mm -hmm. Now, listen. In New Jersey, we're stuck voting for the lesser of two evils, like going from the frying pan into the furnace or receiving a handful of crumbs versus receiving mm -hmm. nothing because the Democrats in New Jersey, many of them are wealthy and uh, some of them have uh, Wall Street ties. Mm -hmm. Some of them are former Wall Street people, like, you know, Phil Murphy, the former governor John Corzine, uh, Bergen County um, um, state uh, congressman, uh, um, assemblyman, senator. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Um, the one I bucked heads with uh, on his uh, on his uh, telephone town hall meeting. Yeah. Um, You'll think of it. Yeah. Uh, well, some Wall Street ties. Bob Phil Murphy by far has the most. But he's the lesser of the two evils. What can you do? I, 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 I listen to his ads. They sound good. I'm definitely not going to vote for a Republican ever. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to vote straight down the line um, since there are no... Um, progressive 
uh, our revolution, Bernie Sanders people running, nor would they make the, the polls, nor would they be invited to the debates. You don't, have, you don't need a crystal ball to predict what's going to happen. It's always going to be e e the establishment, two major parties. There is a debate coming up, or it's going to be very close. I'm, I don't know which day. Might even be today. Tomorrow. I don't um, know. But it's right here. It's coming. It's coming up. With Guadano and uh, Phil. And, and Phil. Yeah. Well, I think Phil's going to do a hell of a good job in that debate. That's my prediction. Um, so, I mean, I don't really have any Chisler's Hall of Shame that is considered, so, oh, well, sizable. I mean, I could, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but um, I might as well do it again. I, I want to induct um, a health insurance company, WellCare, into the Chisler's Hall of Shame because I found out that WellCare only pays for one meal per day for, for the elderly, like my mother, who mm -hmm. receives food from a company called Mom's Meals. One meal per day, WellCare is paying for. And one eight ounce packet of uh, non-fat dry milk. Cool. So, according to WellCare, that's all a senior citizen is entitled to, is one uh, modestly size, I wouldn't call it tiny like an like airline food, but a moderately sized meal per day and, and a cup of milk. Yeah. I mean, why don't you just like get, dig up Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol and you know, and, and just dump mush, dump a scoop of mush into gruel, gruel into some, <laughs> into their bowl and say, well, you better roll that around in your mouth several times uh, before you swallow it because that's the only meal you're going to get. Yeah. So, uh, but I hear great things about United Healthcare. No wonder the A the AARP deals with United Healthcare. Um, I hear great things about it that they pay mm -hmm. all the bills compared to other companies like Horizon um, and. Um, for car insurance, the AARP uh, provided me with the lowest rates in New Jersey. Uh, they deal with the Hartford Company. There's now a car insurance... So I salute the AARP. All right? There's now a car insurance where you pay by the miles you drive. Oh, is that similar to the classic car owners? They pay a, a, a lower fee a lower rate yes, they do, yeah. because they're basically they're either taking the car to the to the mechanic the auto body or the car shows right. and right. then back home again right or in a parade and and they cover it up or uh, you know where where the tarp or they put it in the garage yep. Yep. and they baby it yep so therefore the miles are minimal yep so they pay less that is an that is not a bad idea so i imagine you have to prove what's on your odometer. That's another one. Another one is uh, for those that have a Medicaid card, you qualify for something called dollar a day auto insurance. Mm -hmm. But it's only for Medicaid recipients. Don't ask me why it's not for uh, everyone living on a fixed income, like uh, retired senior citizens, uh, people living on social security disability. I think any, everyone that's living on a fixed income should get dollar a day auto insurance in New Jersey and should also uh, mm -hmm. be able to apply uh, for Medicaid with PAAD and uh, of course Silver Script is a great Medicare Part D company because you don't pay a premium. I mean, it's bad enough you have to pay a Medicare premium if you're living on a fixed income, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, and that, that, that's over 100 bucks, I think. 130 
something odd dollars uh, Medicare premium. And but what we really need, of course, is uh, health care is a right, universal, single payer uh, uh, health care, which, uh, due to Bernie Sanders' hard work and persistence, he is getting more and more Democrats on board with him. Uh, including, uh, which includes Elizabeth Warren and maybe even Chuck Schumer and uh, Hildebrand. I think he's got 11 people. He'll, he's got 11 Democrats. 11. Uh, that are that are backing up. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, by the way, I was in. Uh, I went um, to the uh, Royal Hibachi uh, Grill. Uh, buffet in Saddlebrook, New Jersey on uh, Route 46 mm -hmm. the West mm -hmm. in the Saddlebrook Mall. I had outstanding food uh, and outstanding sushi and uh, yeah. seafood, seafood salad. Uh, the, uh, the video is on the internet, it's on Facebook now. And I, I went to the Dollar Zone and uh, lo and behold, my Wilkinson Sword razor blades came in. So I bought several of them. You know, usually they cost five dollars each for for five blades. You know, yeah. Wilkinson sort, but these were a buck each for five blades. You got to take advantage of it because they do not come in Often. on a consistent basis. But you uh -huh. never know what you're going to find in those special, independently owned dollar stores. Mm -hmm. The Dollar Tree is great. Don't get me wrong, but. Uh, you just never know what you're going to find in, in, in this particular one. Um, so, let's banter a bit because we are getting close to, we got about maybe 10 more minutes before we have to take a short break. Uh, unless you have a short reading. Uh -huh. Unless you have a short reading. That you think you can knock off. If not, we can just banter about stuff. Well, I don't have short readings here. I have well, readings. You know what? Know. Don't read it. I have readings. All right. You know what? They ain't gonna last no nine minutes. No, but read it. Eight but minutes. but when I when I say finish the paragraph or the sentence, where, oh, you know. I'll be finished. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Americans overwhelmingly disagree with President Donald Trump. No shit. On just about everything from his military threats to North Korea to his combative stance toward NFL players who won't stand for the national anthem. And what about his insane tweets that never stop? But a USA Today Suffolk University poll I like that word, Suffolk. finds an unusual disconnect. It's Suffolk. Americans are increasingly optimistic about the nation's economy. What? He's just really intent on keeping the nation divided. Stupid teabagger idiots. <coughs> no empathy, no compassion. Just all about him and, a tw and tweeting. Trump's defenders counter that he has faced tough problems. Don't forget that, that roll of paper towel that Donald Trump wants to toss Puerto Rico. That's right. An unrelenting opposition from his political foes. It's not a good climate out there yet. And he's navigating through it for the first time during Trump's presidency. A majority of Americans, 53%, say in the USA Today poll that the economy is in recovery. What? That typically would lift the views that the nation is headed in the right direction. But this time, nearly two-thirds, 64%. Also say the country is on the wrong track. As Trump approaches the one-year anniversary of his election next month, already a year, son of a man. Wow, time sure flies. Man. When, you're, is, when you're suffering. <laughs> his underwater approval ratings and the public's anxiety hold perils for his presidency. They embolden his critics and make it harder for him to push legislative proposals such as a tax bill through Congress. Historically, sagging presidential approval ratings also signal trouble for the party in power in midterm elections. 
though surveyed say by 57 to 33 percent that they want to elect a Congress in 2018 that stands up to Trump, not one that cooperates with him, and that almost all one in five Republicans, as well as a predictable partisan divide, with nine of ten Democrats calling for an opposition Congress, independence by two to one, just hold that view. Americans, just about everybody in politics in low esteem, not to mention the news media. Congress gets a whopping unfavorable rating of 64 to 17 percent. The Democratic Party is viewed unfavorably by double digits, 48 to 37 percent. The GOP fares worse, 62 to 23 percent. Vice President Mike Pence is on unfavorable rating is better than Trump's, 57 to 34. But it's still in negative territory at 44 to 36 percent. Gosecki's Ambar, 1897, not, not mid 1800s, 1897. Go ahead. When it comes to North Korea, Americans are more likely to agree with the embattled Secretary of State Rex Tillerson than with his boss. Yeah. By a three to one margin, 61 to 20 percent, Americans say the United States should pursue diplomacy to try to curtail North Korea's nuclear program not undertake military action by an even wider margin, 69 to 15 percent, they say the U.S. should launch military strikes only in response to a North Korea attack, not as a preemptive step. Oh, oh that wasn't bad. So, um, yeah, he, um, oh, I want to say greetings to my near, dear friend, very near and dear, uh, from San Diego, California, and uh, a fine progressive warrior, and Natalia Rodriguez of San Diego, California. Um, and, you know, um, uh, the, the evidence is in that Donald Trump uh, is, is, uh, is not, um, he has some um, cards missing from, uh, from the, the deck. deck. He had, definitely has some cards missing from the deck. Tom Petty died. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Tom Petty. Let's have a moment of silence for Tom Petty. Okay, um, Donald Trump, no compassion, no empathy, um, uh, uh, sociopathic, which is common with Republicans, especially the rich, especially those that were born with a silver spoon in their mouth, that were coddled and spoiled, you know, uh, I, there was an article before I came here that stated that he mocked the Lat Latino accent recently. I have to read that article. Okay, we are going to take a break. And we'll be back.
continue. One of us is the inventor of the personal computer. The other a former member of the Federal Communications Commission. We come from different walks of life, but we both recognize that the FCC is considering action that could end the Internet as we know it. Yeah, you mean fascism. A dynamic platform for entrepreneurship, freedom of speech, jobs, education, and free expression. Will consumers and citizens control their online experiences, or will a few gigantic gatekeepers take this technology down the road of centralized control, toll booths, and constantly rising prices for consumers? At stake is the nature of the Internet and its capacity to transform our lives even more than it already has. The Senate is expected to approve another term for FCC Chairman Ajit Pai, and the FCC may vote this month on his plan to wipe away the open internet. If Pi's majority permits fast lanes for the biggest internet service providers such as Comcast and Verizon, AT&T, companies could speed up or slow down the sites and services as they prefer. That'll be great for their business affiliates and corporate friends. But whoa to the startup that wants to build the next great web service. It could find itself in a slow lane. And unable to compete with established firms. And pity the booger the local blogger who criticizes her ISP's crummy service. The broadband gatekeeper would be free to slow or to silence her. Net neutrality can be highly technical, but there's a simple principle underneath the jargon. Broadband consumer should have access to lawful content without ISP interference. That means no censorship or fast lanes. Well, in a, in a military dictatorship like in North Korea, you have uh, you don't have a free, open, worldwide web. You have a you have a government-controlled intranet. Yeah. So in China too. Yes, yes, unless you're in Hong Kong. Yeah, which is not really part of China. But, yeah, I'm a little confused. But although they did, I think the I'm confused English about. sold it back to them or something. Now what about, now Shanghai has embraced capitalism quite uh -huh. a bit. This is what confuses the hell out of me. Yes, it does. Shanghai so is, a, is a very... Chinese cap embrace capitalism. Yeah, Shanghai, as well as the Chinese... Um, government with uh, some very wealthy uh, businessmen like the gentleman that owns Alibaba Alibaba who's the uh, which is like eBay and Amazon he's the wealthiest man in China then there's Foxconn you know with, with their slave labor um, at 32 cents an hour no benefits and they have to wear adult diapers because they can't take breaks and whatever uh, they embrace capitalism to the fullest, but then again, the people are not allowed um, freedom. freedom. The most basic freedom. freedom. All the all the basic freedoms. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Though Pi thinks paid prioritization would somehow benefit consumers, I allowing the ISPs to make such arrangements would stifle innovation online and make it harder for the next generation 
streaming service or social network to reach the market. A fast lane for some is a slow lane for all others. Even more troubling than the threat to consumers is the impact this could have on a democracy. <coughs> Ending net neutrality would take freedom and choice from the less powerful. This is a core issue for our civil society. So this is the term that is used for right-wing conservative uh, fascists wanting to take our internet freedom away, right? Is that the term that they generally use? Is net neutrality? Yes. Is it net neutrality, a, la a, a, a removal of net neutrality, or... It's one of those Republican things, like clear skies. I mean. Net neutral ne neutrality has kind of a positive ring to it. Exactly. But it's not. Right? It's not. <sighs> Americans of every political persuasion depend on the Internet to educate themselves, speak their minds, and organize for change. Mass mobilizations on all sides of the climate, health care and immigration debates, illustrate the point. Even as our political discourse reaches unprecedented levels of polarization, 77% of Americans, including overwhelmingly majorities of both Republicans and Democrats, support maintaining net neutrality. The FCC must abandon its ill-conceived plan to end net neutrality. Instead of creating fast lanes for the few, it should be moving all of us to the fast lane by encouraging competition in local broadband connectivity and pushing companies to deliver higher speeds at more affordable prices. It's the right thing for us as consumers and as citizens. And that was written by Steve Wozniak, personal computer guy, with Mr. Uh, yeah, a jo Apple, a jo Apple guy. Jobs, uh, Jobs. Uh, the Steve late Jobs. Uh, Steve Jobs. Right. So, uh, Steve Wozniak is uh, the head honcho there now. Right. And anyway, this was written by him and Michael Cox, a member of the Federal Communications Commission. Well, Wozniak is. Um, he, he he seems a bit progressive when he talks. Uh, that sounds like I've heard him on 60 Minutes and other programs. And, uh, you know. President uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> the response that anyone, but especially blacks, who verbalizes or displays any form of protest should be fired. Protest against him? No, oh. like uh, the kneeling instead oh, of standing. Uh, oh, oh, uh, protest meaning uh, Donald Trump doesn't want anyone to have freedom of speech. That's correct. You might as well just come clean and say that. That's correct. No obeying the Constitution. Is this graceful? And a sad reminder of the days when the company line was America. Love it or leave it. Trump and those who think like him cannot understand that, number one, protest is a protected right of every American. And two, protest has been a vehicle of the most important civil and social improvements and changes in this great nation and that they would not have been possible without those brave people who sacrificed their careers even their lives to take the make the country that they love better <clears throat> well those uh, morons those flag-waving uh, morons that's, that say America love it or leave it, if it's not based on our founding fathers' uh, 
Constitution, United States no, Constitution. No, we have a right to air our grievances oh, without, to without, the government. Oh, without a doubt. The right to protest. Right. Um, I, I mean peacefully protest. Um, well, yes, of course. Is protected. Part of the is protected by the Constitution. That's correct. Um, all right, finish up, and I want to make a comment about Las Vegas. From where Trump stands, far above the fray, socially, morally, and intellectually removed from the turbulent tribulations of generational discontent and maltreatment, everything is binary, seen from the perspective of privilege. His view is that of a person isn't, who isn't happy with the status quo. They should leave or be punished. Threats to fire and punish people for doing what is constitutionally protected are obscene and a travesty to our way of life. They are antithetical to what the country stands for. Coming from the mouth of a president, they are un-American. They reflect an ignorant, impulsive, vindictive mentality, a divisive gesture that plays to an audience rather than one that echoes the principles upon which this nation was founded. Trump should follow the advice of the esteemed Kizer Khan, father of an American hero, and read the Constitution. Yeah, just like right-wing conservatives should uh, actually read the Bible also, <laughs> and not cherry-pick from the Bible, but only what they like. Yeah. And by the way, I found a great banner about that that I put on, uh, posted, I uploaded in the God Project album on the uh, Progressive Discussions uh, Facebook page, and I put your name under it because it was well made. It has to do with conservatives, uh, zealots, cherry-picking only what they like yeah. from the Bible and the fact that they have to be hypocrites. They they do not uh, uh, walk the walk, they only talk the talk. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to have a moment of silence for the 58 some odd people that, uh, innocent people that, uh, that lost their lives in Las Vegas and then I'll make a comment. Okay, first of all, when the Second Amendment was created, um, people only uh, had muskets that fired one lead ball at a time, one projectile at a time, not uh, hundreds of rounds uh, uh, per minute. With a bump stock. Now, uh, whether it be bump stock, uh, 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 whether bump stocks are legally attainable uh, and available or whether it be automatic weapons. Uh, anything that would convert a gun to, into an automatic weapon or automatic weapons in themselves should be illegal for uh, civilians uh, to acquire. Uh, they, they, these are military weapons. These are not weapons uh, that a civilian uh, should have or needs to have. To shoot uh, a deer. Uh, right. Hunter. Hunters have their hunting rifles and compound bows and whatever for hunting and shot, shotguns. Hmm. They do not require a military killing machine uh like an automatic weapon yes the second amendment was created when we only have muskets um 
Also, I don't care what the NRA has to say, uh, even in regards to regulations. There, there should be very, uh, what's the word, very f uh, detailed, stringent uh, background uh, investigations for everyone that purchases a firearm. Any firearm, there should be a background check, and it should not be a frivolous background check. Okay. It should be a thorough one. Uh, no psychiatric, uh, no, pa no uh, person with a psychiatric background uh, of any kind should be allowed to purchase a firearm. Enough said. Okay, continue. I don't know. What, do you, what do you think about what I just said? You, is it uh, pretty accurate? I mean, is well, it acceptable to you? Also, uh, back when the Second Amendment was written, right. founding fathers, there were militias. Yes, much like the National Guard, but not really like. Well, to it. protect against a rogue government, right? Possible well, no, government. to protect the state <coughs> that you lived in, say Rhode Island. And Rhode Island had a militia. Right, they weren't Rhode Island red chickens either. And, they were actually people. And you kept, you kept your musket at the armory. Yeah, but they, didn't they hunt back then too? With yeah, muskets? you might have had a hunting uh, gun at home or something like that. Because the Appalachian but, people had, they all had their rifles. Yeah, yeah. But your, let's say your main weapon was at the armory. And if there was a problem and they called you out, you went to the armory and got your gun. That's why it was called an armory. Yeah. So, all of a sudden the uh, Supreme Court changes all of this and it becomes individual. The individual is allowed to own whatever the hell he wants. And why? Because if you if you look at all of these um, reasons, there's one big reason that stands out that these people want guns. They're afraid of their government is going to come after them and take their guns. Right-wing uh, teabaggers, right-wing people that are not part of the top two richest percentile of the population, they have one thing in common. They're extremely paranoid about government right. controlling their lives, taking away their rights. Right. And, and everything is... Uh, uh, the, the conspiracy theories that they discuss online on social media is always directed towards government and never towards the private sector, towards corporations. And most of these governments that they are afraid of are Republican controlled. Well, they're the fascist. So what the hell the are they afraid of? They're the fascist ones, right? But they don't think so because the Republicans are allowing them to have all kinds of guns that they want. Well, they sure as hell want the right to bear any arms right. they want, but they don't want to give people the right to health care and education. Oh, no. They are, they're privileges. Uh, health care and uh, decent health care and education are, are not supposed to be rights, but the rights to have an, you know, a stockpile of automatic weapons. Yeah. That's, that, that's right. You right. know, and these, and these I, I've seen documentaries where these same... Uh, paranoid uh, right-wing people uh, they're building bunkers and yeah and, and, and storing food and yes. getting ready to shoot anybody who tries to escape uh, the atomic blast and, and get their food they're gonna take my food they're gonna yeah, yeah, come yeah. nobody's allowed in my bunker I'm not gonna everything is me 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 that's right that's right you know they're 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 very uh, self-motivated everything is about self Right. Not about sharing. Ooh. They, they, they bear no resemblance to the no. world tomorrow and God's economics. Let's put it that way. No. No Absolutely resemblance. Not. But neither do Republicans bear any resemblance Absolutely to that. Absolutely not. No. So, yes, they're extremely paranoid. Uh, 
everything's a conspiracy coming from the government. Right. They never say anything like uh, corporate CEOs are paying off our politicians to control our lives and to intrude on us and it's always the government maybe spying back at you through your cell phone through your iPhone and your your Android and your television and your computer monitor the government is spying on you right you know and and, 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 and most times never blame corporate CEOs and most times the government that they're bitching about is a Republican one Right, but they're, but they're always <laughs> demonizing the so-called uh, 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 liberal media that really doesn't exist per se, uh, and and the, and and the Democrats. Uh, well, of course, they're putting the blame on them. Exactly, because these idiots, they believe mm -hmm. these evangelical zealot cultist religious freaks believe that a mere fertilized egg. Is a human baby. I got. I have news for you. Your fertilized egg uh, that you're trying to allow to exist uh, um, by attacking Planned Parenthood and everything and, and birth control laws, which, by the way, is in the news recently. A woman's right to contraception. There's articles out there now. Yeah. Okay, you believe, look, your fertilized human egg is no more a human baby than an acorn is an oak tree. It is a potential human baby, even if it's, a, if it's a, an embryo that breeds like a fish, it's still not a human baby, yet. Hmm. Now, it's in the news, I'm not sure if you have a reading, but... It's definitely in the news concerning women's contraception and their right to yeah, they, get they, contraception. Companies have been given the right, if they are... Uh, to fire. Well, if they uh, uh, morally or if they religiously do not agree with health insurance providing birth control for their workers, they will be able to opt out. No, so they want they want to they want to do like the old popes uh, of the Catholic Church, uh, you know, uh, demanding that no contraception is ever used and right. just keep well, out yeah. banging our babies, uh, even if you don't have a pot to piss in. Well, of course, yes, they, but they don't think long term about who's who's going to mm -hmm. support all all these extra children. No. No. Yeah. Okay. Very, real smart. Patriotism is usually the refuge of the scoundrel. He is the man who talks the loudest, Mark Twain said in 1908. Playing the loud scoundrel rule today is President Donald J. Fire the son of a bitch is Trump. Scallywag. Instead of unifying us, Trump may have just divided and inflamed at least one social racial issue 100 fold well he has the capability not only to uh infuriate the bottom 98 percent and in including poor people minorities women uh people of color immigrants of color but he has the capability of of, of pissing off his own political party wrapping, has. wrapping oneself in the american flag and in our national anthem, can easily become a cover for deception, greed, unbridled nationalism, and dog whistle racism. It's a front. Meanwhile, the scoundrel on stage distracts us from his own shortcomings by mocking the sufferings of others and then shockingly punching him in the face to please his base. Those football and basketball professionals who recently expressed themselves non-violently for what they see as a hurtful moment in American history are not disrespecting our flag or our national anthem. More importantly, they are not disrespecting our values and what we stand for. 
Their expressions are the exceptions to the rule that makes me proud to be who I am as an American and thankful to them for helping me to realize this all the more. I delight in being one from many, protected by our Constitution, including its First Amendment, without which our quest for justice becomes impossible. I may not feel called to take a knee, but I do feel called to respect those players' right to do so, and their right to seek and protect the truth that will enable justice to take root. I'd lock arms with anyone for working for that end, including those in law enforcement, whom I also have reason to respect. Well, I think any professional athlete of color has a right to protest the national anthem because uh, they are living in a racist and fascist society under uh, Republican rule, and, and which includes police brutality and discrimination against immigrants of color and people of color in general. So I don't blame them. I would, uh, I would not, you know, honor the national anthem if I was a person of color either, because I would have no justifiable reason to do so. Okay, um, but uh, that's it. We, mm, unless you have a short one, we could banter. All right, let's banter. We're, we're closing. Yeah, we're closing in on the bewitching hour. Known as lunch. Yes. We will break for lunch very soon. And you will be joined by How to Defeat a Conservative Bible Verses. Simply hit the pause button, read and learn. Followed by promo. And then we will return <clears throat> with the balance. The second half of Progressive Discussions. We are coming to you from the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. Uh, it happens to be mid-October 2017. Uh, uh, my favorite month of the year, but I'm not getting my favorite month of the year weather. Ah. Uh, no. And I want to induct Staples into the Chiseler's Hall of Shame because I couldn't get the new pen to work. Now I have to light a match. I have to light a flame on the on the ballpoint to get the ink to come out. Gotta love it, man. Corporate America, everything made in most likely in China. China. Subpar, of course. Subpar. Yeah. But anyway, we're gonna break for lunch, and we'll be back naturally, mm -hmm. God willing. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna 
of Mega Life 21 hard hitting podcasts, holistic health talk, and progressive discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censor pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. We are back. Jack. Back from lunch, Jack. And we are starting on our second Dos Equis Ambar. That's right. 1897. My favorite Mexican beer. And I've tried them all when I was in uh, Baja. Dos Equis Ambar, which is stronger and darker than Dos Equis Lager, which happens to be pretty damn good in itself. So we're taking a break from Yinling. All right. Believe it or not, Yinling is cheaper than this. Ah. Up here in New Jersey. Ah. Down in, uh, in, in Baja, Mexico, at the local Walmart, it's about five bucks. It's, it's actually 50% uh, cheaper, believe it or not, in Mexico. Okay, go ahead. I find it amazing that the actions of a has-been NFL quarterback and the words of our president that most people have thought but never had the guts to actually say has caused so much turmoil in this country. We are truly living in an upside-down world. There are so many things that we all took for granted. And now, after many years of brainwashing by liberals in this country... Here we go, here we go. We can't say that anymore! Teabagger, you no-good, stinking, idiotic, imbecilic, numbskull teabagger. We grew up knowing that the definition of marriage was, and we knew that a baby should stay in its mother's womb for nine months and not be murdered. Murdered. Yeah, a fertilized egg is a murdered child. Sure it is. We knew what our flag <laughs> and what this country stood for. And last, but not least, we knew who God was. Oh! That's right, uh, 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 right-wing conservative zealot evangelicals all have a bat phone to God. Even even the TV evangelists have a bat phone to God. They got, to God. The, they got the, the Klieg light. 
to God. To God. Remember yes. what Archie Bunker says when the meathead was anxious to have Thanksgiving dinner. He says, "Don't." He says, "Don't worry. God will keep your the turkey warm. God will keep the food warm." Because he he wanted to read from the Bible like he really knew what the hell he was talking about. If you notice anything about uh, uh, all in the family when they were going to eat, they never ate, and the food got cold. Yeah, they were too busy arguing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, oh, by the way, uh, are you familiar with uh, Jeff Sessions' uh, new law uh, 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 called um, Religious Liberty? Sounds positive, but it's not. L religious Liberty, where a company can fire anyone who they feel uh, is, is gay, discrimination against gay people for just being gay and fire you, even though you're probably the best damn employee the company ever saw. Well, guess what? They, uh, they're playing God, uh, being judgmental there, and uh, they, um, I guess religious liberty means their liberty to force their views and opinions oh, on yeah. everyone else. That's right. That's right. Their version of their re rewritten Holy Bible. I love a certain Bible verse, and it is so appropriate in this case. Isaiah 5, verse 20, quote, <coughs> Woe to those who call evil good, and good evil, who put darkness for light, and light for darkness. Yeah, right-wingers. Uh, how about that? Well, that could apply to them, too, couldn't it? Don't throw stones in the glass house. Yeah. Alright. Hypocrisy is a is the number one primary trait of uh, conservative Republicans. The new GOP tax plan delivers a big tax cut to the wealthiest Americans. Of course. While some in lower tax brackets would end up paying more. According to analysis, Friday from prominent nonpartisan researchers. The plan, being touted by Donald Trump as the biggest tax cut ever, delivers 50% of its total tax benefit to taxpayers in the top 1%. What else is new, right? Yeah. <coughs> Those with incomes above $730,000 a year, according to the Tax Policy Center of the Urban Institute and the Brookings Institution. For those wealthy taxpayers, their after-tax incomes would increase 8.5% next year. For other taxpayers, though, the benefits are far more modest or non-existent. Taxpayers in the bottom 95% would see tax cuts averaging 1.2% of after-tax income or less next year. And about 12% of taxpayers would face a tax increase next year of $1,800. That includes more than a third of taxpayers making between about one hundred and fifty thousand and three hundred thousand. Mostly because of the elimination of many itemized deductions. By twenty twenty seven, taxes would increase for about a quarter of Americans, including nearly thirty percent of those earning about fifty thousand to 150000 a year. The number of taxpayers with a tax increase rises over time. That's because the Republican plan would replace personal exemptions, which are tied to inflation, with some tax credits that are not. 
The findings were certain to fuel the Democrats' main attack line against the GOP plan, that it is a giveaway to the rich at the expense of the middle class. Oh, always the case. Republicans immediately disputed that analysis. They, they, they want to attack uh, Social Security and Medicare, which really doesn't belong to them. It, it's paid for by we the people. Oh, yeah. it, it's stealing taxpayers' money and uh, 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 all social programs, actually. But, but Medicare and Medicaid, I mean, Medicare and Social Security are not social programs. They're not welfare. They're paid for. But the, the, anything that has to... Anything that benefits the bottom 98%, Republicans want to cut. Do away with. That's how they make up for it. Yeah. Yeah. The so-called study is misleading, unfounded, and biased, said House Ways and Means Chairman Kevin Brady, Republican of Texas. Stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty. TPC makes a variety of overreaching and unrealistic assumptions about policy decisions members of Congress still have to make as we draft pro-growth tax legislation. Republicans are unified in delivering tax reform that will lower taxes on middle-class Americans and ensure they are able to keep more of their hard-earned money and grow our economy. The Tax Policy Center noted that its analysis was preliminary based on a proposal that itself lacked key information, such as the proposed income brackets that would correspond to the new three tax rates. Republicans envision replacing the current seven with three. The findings came as Senate Republicans unveiled a budget plan that lays the groundwork for their effort to overhaul the nation's tax system. Provisions in the budget would allow Senate Republicans to pass the tax, pack, tax package with a simple majority of votes, preventing Democrats from being able to block the legislation and rendering Democratic votes unnecessary. Interesting. The Tax Policy Center's analysis was based on an ambitious framework released on Wednesday by the Trump administration and congressional Republicans that aims to reform the loophole-ridden code and dramatically cut corporate rates from 35% to 20%. Mm -hmm. It's the GOP's marquee legislative project this year, following the embarrassing failure on health care. Mm -hmm. Trump described the tax plan Friday as a giant, beautiful, and massive, the biggest ever in our country tax cut. The tax legislation can advance only after House and Senate passage of the budget blueprint. The Senate Budget Committee intends to vote on its plan next week. A companion measure is headed for the House. Vote next week as well. The new budget plan would permit the upcoming tax measure to add $1.5 trillion dollars over the coming decade to the 20 trillion national debt. The Tax Policy Center finds the GOP tax plan would reduce federal revenues by 2.4 trillion dollars over the next decade. Gee, how, how much could the middle class be strangled? Until the middle class is no more? <laughs> and then possibly, you, and then possibly. You have, not, you have nothing but the desperate uh, poor left? Then, then, then where would they get their consumers? 
Um, they believe, like I guess, that they can buy them. But how many refrigerators can the rich buy? There's not enough rich people to buy to stimulate the economy. Yeah. The I li mean, the little guy has always been the backbone of the. Uh, I mean, yeah, the United yeah, yeah. States economy. The rich gent goes <laughs> buying a yacht once in a while, you know, and that's about it. Listen, the more the more surplus <laughs> cash, that means extra loot to you lay people out there. You 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 imbecile, uh, uh, you imbecilic uh, trumpanzees. That means extra cash in your pocket. The more surplus cash you put in the pocket of the little guy, the more he or she spends and yeah. puts back into the United States economy. Absolutely. <clears throat> and Main Street, not Wall Street, is the backbone of the U.S. economy. Seventy <clears> percent. <throat> They provide all the jobs. Small business provides all of seventy percent of the jobs. And what else is Main Street? I'll tell you what else. They're the middle class, also. They're also part of the middle class. Maybe the 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 uh, moderate to upper middle class, but they're still part of the middle class. The small emerging growth companies, the entrepreneurs. The professionals that uh, hang their shingle uh, in a storefront on Main Street, and all the other Main Street small businesses. Republicans face a big problem after the collapse of their latest push to repeal the Obama health care plan. Their own voters are angry and don't trust them right now. They don't know what to do about it. That's trouble for a party preparing to defend its House and Senate majorities in 2018 midterm elections. Oh boy, are people going to be pissed off in 2018, November of 2018. Yeah, if the people get out and vote. See, uh, this is the problem with, with Americans. They, they talk to talk, but will they walk to walk? Yeah, right. At least Europeans, when they get that pissed off, they they riot, they turn vehicles over, they set things on fire, they beat people up. Ooh. Americans don't do shit. They go on social media and show how brilliant they are. Donald Trump and top congressional Republicans say they will take another run next year at dismantling President Barack Obama's health care plan. But they've made doing just that a core promise in four consecutive national elections with nothing to show for it. If I'm a voter in wherever and somebody says, we're going to come back to health care, would I be skeptical? Sure, said Senator Bob Corker, of Re a Republican of Tennessee, who's retiring rather than seek a third term next year. When something has been committed to and it doesn't happen, and then it doesn't happen again, I think it's self-evident it isn't a good thing. This year's failure was especially stinging because it was the first time since Obama's 2010 overhaul law was enacted that Republicans controlled the White House and the Congress. The latest debacle came on Tuesday when Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, uh, ugly, Republican of Kentucky, ugly old turtle face averted a guaranteed defeat by not holding a vote on a last resort bill transforming much of Obama's law into block grants that states would control. He'll, he would throw the entire 98% of the U.S. population, including 
uh, low-income people, right under the bus in favor of his uh, the uh, the fat cats that grease his palm and uh, contribute to his campaign. Yeah. These setbacks are causing strains uh, among the Senate Republicans. It's obvious we don't have the kind of leadership we need to pass this piece of legislation, said Senator Ron Johnson. And, and he told a reporter Friday after an appearance in Fitchburg, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Johnson, who has clashed with McConnell before, declined to say whether the leader should step down. Sure. Well, it would be nice if uh, McConnell and Paul Ryan would step down, but uh, would, they re would they be replaced by a more moderate Republican? Maybe not. The broken promises are an epic fail that puts <clears throat> less trust in the minds of conservative voters said Tim Phillips, president of Americans for Prosperity, the conservative group backed by the activist brothers David and Charles Koch. Prosperity for who? For the, them! The top 2%. They're already, they're already worth over $85 billion. The prosperity for the Walton family, for the Koch brothers. Yeah, the Waltons are second. Right. Bastards. The GOP healthcare implosion has poisoned the attitude of GOP primary voters toward congressional Republicans in general. Stephen Law wrote in a memo this week, Law, McConnell's former chief of staff, heads the Senate Leadership Fund, a political group allied with the Kentucky Republicans. The memo was released on Tuesday, hours before the GOP primary defeat of Senator Luther Strange, Republican of Alabama. Lex Luther is very strange. Oh yeah, that's a politician you really oh, can boy. trust. That, that was that uh, race with Ray Moore, the idiot who wanted the Ten Commandments in his courtroom. <laughs> hey, I heard one of the uh, Bernie Sanders Our Revolution uh, uh, men uh, won, um, uh, what was it, mayor of a large Alabama city? Uh, 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 I think I know who you mean. Uh, African American man, Slim. Slender. Um, I don't know if it was Montgomery, Alabama. It might have been, but he he's a progressive and he he won the mayor 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 election. Law warned that the ouster of Strange would make him the first casualty and probably not the last of the Obamacare repeal fiasco. In an ABC News Washington Post poll, more Republicans disapproved than approved of the job the Congressional GOP is doing by a dismal 21 percentage point. Just eight Senate Republicans face re-election in 2018 and only two have seemed to face serious GOP primary challenges Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona and Nevada's Dean Heller but fed by Republican voters anti-establishment mood and disillusionment over the party's health care failures, that number could grow. Democrats and their independent allies must defend 25 Senate seats next year, far more than the GOP's eight.
well, we hope they all the demons get voted out in November 2018. That's what we're really hoping for. But that can only happen if more Americans get out and vote. Yeah. But they see this year's GOP health care bills, which budget analysts said would have stripped coverage from millions of Americans as feeding their narrative that Republicans are eroding people's economic security. Well, Republicans um, either have made the attempt or did make the attempt to take health care away from almost 10 million American children, uh, and of course, they they um, they want to abide by uh, corporate CEOs of American insurance companies to uh, re uh, eliminate the pre-existing uh, law, <laughs> yeah. Obama's uh, pre-existing illness law. So if you have a pre-existing existing illness, you're basically dropped dead. Exactly. Hey, you won't be insured or you'll be paying out the wazoo. Hey, listen, uh, Republican voters. You honestly think the private sector is going to do the right thing by you? Come on, be honest. Don't lie to yourself. The private sector is not going to do the right thing by you. I'm not sure how uh, things are. I don't are. think we can do this one here. And you but, see, you see a short one, or you just want to no, banter see for a few one. minutes and call it a day? I will week. do one or two from here, and we'll pick up the rest. Yeah, next but week. you might forget to uh, because it's, I'll never forget. No, because it's on one, it's on one sheet of paper. So uh, yes, you know what I mean. Yeah. You might consider it old hat next week. Because it's yeah. on one sheet of paper. So let's just call it, unless you see a little one uh, or a change of pace, let's just call it a week. All right, we'll call it a week. Then. Okay, because I don't know what the situation is. I, I would be very happy if uh, technically uh, our uh, new camera setup uh, is operating uh, adequately as, as pre-planned. I, I will be very <coughs> happy about that. Uh, so, um, yeah, I don't know what, what these Americans, uh, that don't have a pot to piss in or are living week to week or month to month, I don't know what they expect from, uh, the private sector. They actually, uh, want to, they're in favor of, of privatizing absolutely everything because they, they're spellbound by their Republican Party. They think that the that's the American way. They think that the corporate American CEO is going to do the right thing by them. Well, who invented that? The uh, to me, the American way that thing was is in. our founding fathers and the Constitution. That's the American way. That American way was founded by the industrial people who had the industrial revolution. Yes, the big wig. But what were there, were there were there greedy, selfish, scumbag, big wigs in the 1800s? Absolutely. When, How do you, who the hell do you think started out all the companies? People that no had, small guy had the money people, or the wherewithal to start big companies big, or so, so companies that became big. So families that own plantations, as opposed to a family-owned farm, plantations, wealthy, uh, uh. Uh, plantation owners. Yeah. They prob they're probably the ones that moved to the big cities to join the Industrial Revolution. Like J.P. Morgan, his dad, his grandfather. What did they do? They opened companies. So, so they, so J, the the evil scumbag J.P. Morgan started like Donald Trump did. They, with with family cash, family family well, money. Uh, with cash, obviously. Well, from the family. Yeah. He Probably didn't get it from Santa Claus. No. But I'm trying to... Uh, the, the thing that keeps those people believing in that private system is the bigwigs 
the same way they took over our government is they make those small people believe that they can't fight City Hall, that they are too small to, to stand up to uh, the, the guy that owns the country store. Brainwashing. Yeah, exactly. Conservative propaganda. And then they, they go around believing that. Then. Well, my grandmother used to say you can't fight City Hall. <laughs> she got brainwashed. Yeah. They used to think that the, the Christian religion was pretty much the Catholic Church. Well, uh, Simon Magnus did, Magus did call and it. And they believe Christian. that Jesus was born December 25th. And this is what they believe. And you can't fight City Hall. And when I asked them, well, why is that? They, they didn't have an answer. No, that's what I'm trying to do. I just, I'm trying to give you that. There's this deferential respect for the rich. For instance, uh, Trump had his, his words with the mayor of of uh, Puerto Rico there, uh, it was San Juan. Mayor of San Juan. San Juan. The, the woman. Right. Yes. And she was speaking good stuff against him. He goes down there, and what does she do? She defers to him. And what does that mean? Kisses up to him? Kisses his ass. Well, then she's a she's a dyed in a wool politician. What? But that's what the that's what the small people do to the rich people. Because they feel that oh, you're in a, you're you must be in an ivory tower. You must have done the right things to there become you go. There you go. to become that wealthy and that successful. You must have done something right. Right. Okay. That's it. Take care, everyone. Have a safe and pleasant 